Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles where today on the Haven map in a domination battle tier 10 game we're going to be following the adventures of Aaron Bjarki 00 here in a ship that we really don't see very often. The uh, well it's not the only tier 9 German destroyer now but it was the first tier 9 German destroyer the Z46. I think I could probably state without too much fear of contradiction that when it was first introduced into the game, the Z-46 was a fairly well-rounded ship. In fact, the ship that it leads to, the Z-52, was at one point considered the best destroyer in the game, but, well, that was a long time ago. And the game has moved on quite a bit since then. It's still not a bad ship. I mean, it hasn't changed at all. Although that's kind of the definition of power creep. The thing that's been around for a while doesn't change, but the scenery evolves and advances around it. Nevertheless, it is still a well-rounded ship, it just doesn't really excel at any one thing. And as Aaron is going to demonstrate for us today, you can still do good things in it. Well, hang on, Jingles. The title of this video is A Tale of Two Destroyers. Which is the other one? Well, I, I could just straight up tell you, but I, I feel like that would ruin the fun. Just watch the battle and see if you can figure that one out for yourself. I guarantee you it will be much more enjoyable. One thing that's probably worth pointing out, by the way, is that this battle was recorded on the 20th of June, four days before patch 10.5, which removed friendly fire. In completely unrelated news, I'd like to point out that there is an Asashio on Aaron's team. Now, the Asashio, remember, has deep water torpedoes, but it's got special deep water torpedoes, Regular deep water torpedoes, such as the ones that you find in the Pan Asian destroyers, cannot hit destroyers, but they can hit cruisers, battleships, and carriers. The Asashio's deep water torpedoes can't hit cruisers either, so there are only actually five targets in this game, that the five enemy battleships, that the Asashio can even damage with its main weapons. Except that's not entirely true. There are actually ten targets in this game that the Asashio can damage with its main weapons. All five of the enemy battleships, and all five of the friendly battleships too. Now, Aaron does have pretty good stealth in the Z-46. It's certainly not best in class, but it's definitely not bad. The Asashio definitely has significantly better stealth. It's one of the best things about that Tier Eight premium Japanese destroyer. However, we shouldn't read too much into the fact that he's uh, trailing behind the guy with the worse stealth, Aaron here in the Z-46, because the Z-46 is a faster ship. So it's not surprising that he's up here in the lead. Oh, the team just got their first kill. The friendly Harugamo just detonated the enemy Benham, so that's good. Harugamo's not going to have long to celebrate, however, because the Benham did get some torpedoes away, and the Asashio is laying a smoke screen for the friendly battleships. At least I think that's what he's doing. And if he is, well, team player, I guess. But he does know about battleship smoke firing penalties, right? Meanwhile, the Benham's torpedoes have just sunk the Harugamo, so it's one destroyer down on each team. There go the Asashio's torpedoes. Why was he trying to torpedo a Hindenburg? His torpedoes can't hit cruisers. Well, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he was trying to torpedo the Vittorio Veneto and the Hindenburg was just in the way. And who are those torpedoes aimed at? I mean, seriously, they're heading due north. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's nothing there. <laughs> well, on the bright side, after laying a completely pointless and unnecessary smokescreen for the Grosse Kurfürst and the Slava, he didn't then immediately duck back into the smoke himself and is at least spotting the Hindenburg allowing Arid here to get use out of his smoke, and oh hello. That was a sneaky set of torpedoes, wasn't it? Right from the gap in between those two islands. It's like I always say, smoke screens are torpedo magnets, and I'm kind of surprised that Aaron wasn't actually running his hydro, but it turns out he didn't need to. He was lucky enough that the torpedoes missed, um, because he was angled away there. Hindenburg, showing a nice big fat broadside to shoot at, switching to the armour piercing. And it's here where I'm guessing that the Asashio was only really spotting the Hindenburg through luck rather than judgement, because as soon as Aaron's smokescreen expires, he's the one who spots the Vittorio Veneto. Somehow the Asashio had managed to position himself in such a way that Aaron's smokescreen was blocking the Asashio's line of sight between himself and anything other than the Hindenburg. 
But we'll let that one go, it's not exactly been a game breaker and we can always just put that one down to poor timing. Now remember, the Asashio's torpedoes, and there they go, <laughs> cannot hit anything other than battleships and aircraft carriers. However, I'm not entirely sure that the Asashio player even knows that. It would not be the first time I've seen somebody with deep water torpedoes complaining that their torpedoes weren't hitting targets that those torpedoes aren't supposed to hit in the first place. But at the same time, I don't have any evidence to support this accusation. I may be just completely jumping to conclusions here. The Asashio player may be perfectly aware that his torpedoes present absolutely no threat whatsoever to Aaron in the Z-46. He may be perfectly aware that his torpedoes presented no danger whatsoever to the enemy Hindenburg and he was instead trying to launch them and strike the Vittorio Veneto to the rear of the Hindenburg. The Vittorio Veneto that his second set of torpedoes are chasing after right now. Torpedoes that have a 20 kilometer range and a speed of 67 knots that were launched from a distance of around about 18.5 kilometers away from an Italian battleship that's heading away at a speed of 30 knots. So Realistically, the worst case scenario here is that the Asashio is a complete liability to any of the battleships on his own team. But it could be worse because he's not actually capable, unless he starts shooting at them, of harming any of the destroyers or cruisers on his team. And the best case scenario is that the Asashio is a complete liability to his own team because he doesn't possess even the most fundamental grasp of the basics of mathematics or physics. Well, the enemy Cleveland's been dealt with, and that's great news, because it means the enemy team no longer have any radar. And oh, hello. One, two sets of four torpedoes. That's the Oyster Yachtland. Which doesn't come as a surprise, because we knew he was around here anyway. The reason Aaron's firing a shot here is to see if he gets detected, and he doesn't, because the Oyster Yachtland dumped his torpedoes around the right-hand side of the island, which would usually mean that he's then ducked into cover around the left-hand side of the island. And if he'd done that... When Aaron fired that shot, he would have been detected. Also, there could be other enemy destroyers out here. I mean, at the moment, none of them are spotted. And other destroyers could have come rushing up to this end of the map in order to help prop up this flank. And oh, hello, smokescreen. Hang on a minute. Oyster Yachtland doesn't have a smokescreen. Is that the Angela Merkel? Which is the name that I've just decided to give to the GK Mir... Why, well, I don't know how you pronounce the name of that thing. The Tier 8. Well, yeah, there's the Oyster Yachtland. And there's definitely a destroyer hiding in that smokescreen, so that must be the Angela Merkel. And I'm seeing sets of two torpedoes launched at the Grosser Kerr first there, and that would tally up with the... Oh, those are going to be the Oyster Yachtland's torpedoes! <laughs> Based on the speed they were moving at. Yeah, definitely. Also, we saw the Oyster Yachtland, and they definitely came from that gap in those two islands. But two sets of torpedoes would tally up with the Angela Merkel's torpedo loadout, so... He's definitely lurking in that smokescreen. Which means, I might get lucky with those torpedoes. What's the Asashio up to, by the way? Oh, we'll worry about that in a moment. Yep, there's the Angela Merkel. Aaron's got his Hydro up. And there is the Oyster Yachtland as well. Who to shoot out first? The Oyster Yachtland. Because the Oyster Yachtland is more dangerous in a gunfight to another destroyer than the Angela Merkel. The Angela Merkel is one of those new sort of heavy German destroyers. And its firepower is nothing to be sniffed at. But it's more dangerous to cruisers and battleships in a gunfight. Plus, the Oyster Yachtland is going to find it much harder to disengage because he doesn't have his own smoke. And he was forced out of the Angela Merkel smokescreen by Aaron's Hydro. He's managed to go dark momentarily by virtue of not shooting back, but eh, all Aaron had to do was leave his own smokescreen and reacquire the target and then just edge back in as he continues to rain down high explosive fire. Trying to keep that guy spotted for as long as possible and hey, good news, at least the Asashio is shooting at him. And Aaron gets the kill, his first. Now he switches his fire to the Angela Merkel. And then something very unexpected happens. Oof. <laughs> Double strike. <laughs> Got a detonation on the Tier 8 German. Aaron back inside his own smokescreen, nice and safe, getting some shots in on the Vittorio Veneto while he's still in range. Notice the deep water torpedoes? Yep. 
the Asashio is up to his old tricks. He's managed to get a little closer to the Vittorio Veneto this time, so his torpedoes are actually in range, but... So far, I think Aaron has done more damage to the Vittorio Veneto with his guns than the Asashio has managed this entire game thus far with his torpedoes. The big Italian, using his exhaust smoke generator, he's managed to go undetected. And he's back up again because he doesn't seem to understand how smoke firing penalties work for battleships. Honestly, at this point, is anybody really surprised? Well, that's going to be good news for the Slava, who is probably itching for something to shoot at. And has gotten himself into a pretty nice position. He can lie up behind that island, shielding himself from the bulk of the enemy fire coming from uh, those surviving enemy ships down to the south. They can pretty much only really hit his superstructure there. And it looks like he's going to move forward and try to do the same behind the next island. And that would have been a great position from which the Slava could have finished off the Vittorio Veneto. Unfortunately, he's gone undetected because he stopped shooting. Possibly he ran out of things to shoot at because he was inside a smoke screen and couldn't see out of it. Oh wait, no. No, he's back. And there go yet more Asashio torpedo. This is a good thing. This is not a bad thing. The Asashio is smoking up and shooting at the Vittorio Veneto. Well, it's not a complete waste of his time. He'll be able to use that smoke screen for at least 30 seconds until the Vittorio Veneto moves out of firing range because he started shooting at him at a range of around about 10 kilometers and his guns only have a 10.9 kilometer range, so, you know. Hey, it could have been a lot worse. He could have been dumping his torpedoes to the south at those guys where they would have posed a significant danger to the friendly Slava. Remember, just in case you needed a reminder, this battle was recorded on the 20th of June and the removal of friendly fire didn't happen until the 26th. Oh, nice torpedo, sir. Plenty more where they came from. And yep, the Asashio has now been forced to switch his underwhelming gunfire to the Grosser Kerr first, who's probably about to die anyway because the Vittorio Veneto is now comfortably outside of the Asashio's 10.9 kilometer shooting range. Still, it wasn't a complete waste of the Asashio smoke because there are still around about 13,000 hit points worth of Grosser Kerr first for him to shoot at and a couple of other enemy ships, more through luck than judgment, pushing into the Asashio's gun range. Although I am seeing a familiar pattern emerging here, once again we have a ship with superior stealth, the Asashio, hiding in a smoke screen and using the spotting from a ship with inferior stealth, Aaron Z-46, to light up targets for him. Did I just... oh my god. Luckily the Slava saw those torpedoes coming, and is backing off. Holy shit. You know, if that had been any destroyer other than an Asashio, and some of those torpedoes actually managed to miss the gap and hit the rocks where the Slava's nose was a couple of seconds ago. But if that Asashio was any other destroyer, I would not be hanging around anywhere between him and those enemy ships. Because he not only quite clearly doesn't care who his torpedoes are going to hit, I'm pretty sure he doesn't even understand who his torpedoes can hit. I mean, just earlier, Aaron had the opportunity to pop his torpedoes down that exact same gap and didn't. He held his fire and used his guns instead, exactly because of the threat that he posed to his own Slava. Fortunately for the friendly Slava, the Asashio just got put down by the enemy Azuma as his smokescreen expired and rather than manoeuvring into a position of safety, just kind of sat there in open water shooting at an Azuma at ranges of less than 8 kilometers. Note that Aaron's torpedoes are no danger whatsoever to the friendly Slava. Also note that Aaron's torpedoes are about to earn him something that I have never seen happen in a game of World of Warships before. His second double strike. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's happened before, and maybe some of you have even achieved it, but it's the first time I've seen it. Well, that just leaves the Masashi and the Vittorio Veneto, who is still doing reasonably well despite being pursued by an Asashio for most of the game. The Slavas going for the Masashi. The team do still have a new Strashimi and an Henri the Fourth, but they're not really available to help because they're so far out of position, so this is pretty much down to the Slava. And he does it, utterly bitch slapping the Masashi, who is dumb enough to give him a nice big fat broadside to shoot at at point blank range. That just leaves the Vittorio Veneto. 
and who would have thought that he would have been the last ship standing on the enemy team, given that that Sashio must have launched at least 32 torpedoes at him, each of which was capable of doing a theoretical nearly 21,000 damage. He must have one hell of a torpedo protection system. Either that or he just didn't get hit by any. I think one of those two options is a hell of a lot more likely than the other. Ooh, Aaron, I'm not a big fan of those torpedoes. Right as you launch them at Vittorio Veneto, the Slava turned in. I know I've been ragging on the Asashio this entire game for exactly this sort of thing, but you just committed the same sin. Never, ever, ever fire torpedoes from behind an ally, unless you know for sure which way that ally's going to turn. Although, I think you're probably going to be okay. I wonder if the Slava's going to try to ram him. He probably should. It would be a win. He's going to try it. Oh, he's missed it. Yeah, very, very nearly managed to get him. Now I guess it's just a question of who can outturn each other, and thankfully your torpedoes are going to miss. Actually, they were never going to hit the Vittoria Veneto either, but they're definitely not going to hit the Slava, and that's the important thing. So who's going to get the kill? It looks like the Henri is now shooting at him. Everybody's shooting at him. Possibly even the new Stolashimi's in range. I'd like to... Yeah, it was the Slava. Good. I, I felt like he deserved it. So... A tale of two destroyers indeed. On the one hand, you have Aaron in the Z-46, a destroyer that is generally considered to be fairly mediocre by modern World of Warship standards, and yet which, aside from an extremely dodgy torpedo launching choice right at the end of the battle there, Aaron proved to be remarkably effective with, scoring the first double-double strike that I think I've ever seen in World of Warships. On the other hand, you have the Asashio, a premium tier 8 Japanese destroyer that looks good on paper with its extremely long range and very stealthy and hard-hitting deep-water torpedoes, but which in the hands of, well, somebody who doesn't even understand what the Asashio's deep-water torpedoes, or doesn't care what the Asashio's deep-water torpedoes can do, and also appears to have a, a very shaky grasp on the fundamentals of physics and mathematics, is, well, just not very good. Nevertheless, I hope you've enjoyed today's video, thanks for watching, and thanks for Aaron for sending it in. In the meantime, as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.